Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel and here we are. We are covering microservices and the deployment part. And now we are talking about deploying microservices at Lambda. So we have already discussed AWS CDK. I have shown you different examples like how a simple Lambda can be deployed to AWS with the DynamoDB and all, right? Now we will see how we can deploy a Nest GSS service to the as a Lambda. So till now we have seen only a simple function, like there is a simple function and you wanted to just deploy that function, then you are just specifying that path in the Lambda CDK construct and that you are deploying. But let's replace that Lambda function with the big NestJS service or NestJS microservice, then how it is going to work. That is the agenda of this particular video. First, let's, do, let's understand how we can do it. So we have already seen, let's say you have a NestJS HTTP service and now you wanted to deploy that service. What you do is, let's say you are deploying it on the server. So what you do is you have a main.ts and you just do node main.ts and it starts your application. And then if you have a public and public IP of that server, AWS server or DigitalOcean server, you start hitting the APIs. That's it. But with the Lambda, because Lambda is a function, how it is going to be different. We have a Express app, TypeScript, Express TypeScript app or NestJS app. And now we want to put that app as a Lambda. So whenever uh, there is a request coming from the API gateway, we should be able to hit that Lambda and you should be able to get a response back from the service. Obviously service has its internal route handler. You will be doing a proxy. So you just have a single proxy interface created on the API gateway. And all the requests will be going to the Express app, TypeScript app, or Express TypeScript, or NestJS app. So, what is the difference? How we can make this possible? So, I will talk about this example here. You can see there is a handler created. So, this is really very important. Like, how we can put our NestJS or Express app as a Lambda so that it can work as a microservice and you can actually proxy all the requests coming from API Gateway to the Lambda. Obviously, you need to have an API gateway because API gateway can proxy and Lambda can be triggered through the API gateway, through the S3 event, SNS, SQS event and all. You cannot direct, directly go and talk to Lambda. You need to have an API gateway interface there. So this code is really important and this is what we are going to achieve with AWS Serverless Express. This is actually a module which is in place already and what it does is it helps us to put an Express app as a Lambda. So the whole Express app, which has a 10 or 20 routes on NestJS app, which has a all everything about, okay, it is talking to S3 and it is it has a lots of API, user API, account API, profile API, and talking to the Postgres, RDS, DynamoDB. You are putting that whole service as a Lambda function. So Lambda function is a simple handler that is going to bootstrap your NestJS or Express app. And once you bootstrap, your uh, service is up and, uh, up and running. And now, because the entry point, the entry point of your service is API Gateway. So API Gateway will get the request. Now API Gateway will trigger the Lambda and Lambda is nothing but a simple function. This function I'm talking about. This is just a simple function. And then this function will bootstrap your service. It will take your request context. Okay, what, what is the API endpoint you are trying to hit? What is the query parameter? What is the body? And it will it will send it to the server. So the, this line here is going to bootstrap the server here, and then we will pass the request context to the HTTP server, which is an SGS server or Express server, or Express TypeScript. So this is the magic. We are still hitting the lambda, and yes, there will be a because when you hit the API gateway, it will warm up the lambda because it is bootstrapping, send the request to the server get the response back and give it to the client and then it will cool down because it's not a server running 24 7 then again the request come it will again bootstrap because it's already and we also need to enable the caching so that if the once the lambda is bootstrapped it's not going to bootstrap the lambda again or make it the make the lambda available it will just go get the request and send the response back okay so we already understood the concept of lambda uh, because th there is a cold lambda and there is a hot lambda. Cold lambda means if your lambda is sitting idle and when you send a first request, 
it needs to boots up it needs to warm itself and once you are sending 10 request after that okay it's warm it can send the response back okay so we need to keep the lambda warm so that it can send a, it can deal with the, the requests coming thousands to it okay so we are going to explore this what this magic is this is actually the bridge between your lambda function and your express app or typescript app so we are going to take a look on to here so here this is the express a aws serverless express is moving and this is the module and you can see what we are doing here is we are just creating a simple express app okay we got the app instance and then here we are creating a server here we are creating a server and then this is the function this is actually the lambda function okay because lambda is nothing but a function handler equal to event and context and then what it is doing it is proxying your request to the express server or nest.js server i will show you the the nice and clean example uh, which is here if you try to understand this code let me zoom in because this is the main part we are talking in this whole series let me this is zoom in okay this is handler because lambda function is a lambda is nothing but a function so your request will come here okay handler context and what we are doing here and if you see in the top we are using the serverless express okay serverless express is a module which we are using and then express instance because express is an app or nest.js is an app which we are going to create now your request will hit this lambda function and what we are doing we are bootstrapping the bootstrapping our application and then passing this server to the context server we are calling the server passing the event context and the callback and if you see the bootstrap what it is doing it is actually bootstrapping your server and it is also caching it so here we need to check okay if the server is already bootstrap we don't need to warm it up so if the lambda getting concurrent request we don't need to uh, bootstrap it again and again that's a lambda feature that if your server is available don't bootstrap don't create the app instance again we can just reuse the existing app instance so you can see cache server is nothing but it is using serverless express and here we are passing the app instance which we have created either through express this this highlighted part can be express app happy js app nest js app or express typescript anything we just need to replace it here we are going creating express instance and it, this is the nest.js app so in the nest.js we are passing express adapter we got the nest.js app we are passing the root module of your express app let me zoom in here we are passing the app instance i mean app module root module of the nest.js app passing the express adapter we got the nest.js app instance if everything is fine with your nest.js app every module dependencies are there it will bootstrap it this init will bootstrap it and then here we are passing this app instance this express app instance to the serverless express that's it so here we bootstrap the nest.js app everything is fine and then this express app because this serverless express adapter uses a needs an express app instance so that's what we are doing so even if you, even if you go to the module documentation and try to see what it is have doing it is doing the same thing here we are requiring the app express app creating the server and then proxying all the requests to the server it's the same thing like either you bootstrap and then uh, call the function it's like the same thing in this sample examples so this is what we are going to do to our nest.js app when we are deploying that as a lambda and then this is the code level part then we just need to package it and then we need to just upload this zip file to the lambda because it's going to have a node module dependencies lots of node modules so it will be around 50 to 100 mb zip content and in the lambda lambda needs to know okay what is your function file function file is nothing but okay whatever the file name is dot handler handler is the function name so when the api gateway sends a request this api gateway sends a request it will tr trigger that function that function is written something like this that will bootstrap your express app and will also cache it so if the requests are coming again and again it will be able to respond it directly and then it's, it's going to bootstrap your express app nest.js app rpgs app or any framework and then 
internally the server is up and running and you are passing here the context then server using internal routing will identify okay this is the route you are triggering i will respond with this json object by looking into the database and all so this is really nothing but a simple mystery here we are just using a aws serverless express to make our task okay because we need because lambda is nothing but a function and that function needs to bootstrap our nest js express app and express app using internal routing should be able to handle the request so doing this we are using a single lambda and api gateway is proxying all the requests for this microservice to this lambda and this lambda is taking care of all the api routes which are designed for this microservice so let's take a look at this whole picture in the code in the code we are dividing this into the two sections first uh, we have to just we will we can just take any nest js uh, crud, crud app and then we need to integrate aws serverless express and need to configure our lambda.ts so if you see this code let me zoom in in this code you have a main.ts which is your root module for your nest js app that we are creating every time whenever we are creating a nest js app and here we need to create a lambda.ts this lambda.ts we will feed to the lambda function okay this is lambda.ts lambda function will use and this is the function that it will trigger so on top of your nest js service no more no a big bang code change we are just creating a simple lambda file and we are going to bootstrap our nest js app like this okay so stay tuned in the next video we are going to bootstrap our nest js app as a lambda and deploy that as a lambda function using aws cdk